This is John Immervar, and thanks for joining me for a visit to the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Today we're going to talk about Impressionism. The museum has a fabulous collection of Impressionist art, including this Claude Monet picture of the Japanese bridge in his garden. Although Impressionism is very popular, it's sometimes hard to define exactly what it is. But I'm going to give you a simple definition to get you started. Before I do that, however, we need to talk about the kind of art that the Impressionists were reacting against. Let's start at the Louvre in the late 1800s. Just ignore that pyramid. The dominant style in Western art at this time is called academic art because it's approved by the great Royal Academies of Art in the major European countries. Here's an example. It's called Faust and Marguerite. Painted in the late 1800s, but set in the Middle Ages, the academies love scenes from long ago. We see people in medieval dress outside of a Gothic cathedral. If you were a wealthy patron, you would probably know the story of Faust, a medieval scholar who sold his soul to the devil. And here he is with a red hat, and behind him the devil, Mephistopheles. They have turned their back on Mary and Jesus, and Mephistopheles is saying to Faust, See that innocent girl coming out of the church? Her name is Marguerite, and I can get her to be your mistress. Academic paintings often have a story that the elite would know. And now, look at the style of painting. It is painted with incredible detail. You won't see even a single hint of a brushstroke. These paintings are so smooth, they call them licked. And notice the colors. A famous academic teacher said, A good painting should be like a violin, brown. Look at the detail in the costumes. The artist would probably have put the clothing on a mannequin, since no human model would want to hold the pose long enough to get that kind of detail. A group of younger painters broke away from academic art, and they adopted a totally different style. One of those painters was Renoir, and here's how he painted a street scene. It couldn't be more different, and this kind of art comes to be called Impressionism. And now, here's my working definition, based on the letters E-L-B-O-W, elbow. Let's start with E, which stands for Scenes of Everyday Modern Life, instead of historical scenes as we saw in Faust and Marguerite. Of course, that means scenes from the late 1800s when the Impressionists were at work. And Renoir's painting is a perfect example. We see Paris in 1875, with all the hustle and bustle of modern life. Here's a guy reading a newspaper. A well-dressed woman is enjoying a stroll with her children. And over here, a nun, who isn't in a cloister anymore, but just walking through the city like everyone else. And look at the buildings. They were brand new in Renoir's day, and they're still characteristic of Paris today. We can see those buildings in another modern street scene by another Impressionist, Pissarro. The ground floor with the awnings might have shops with rich people living in apartments on the upper floors and the artists and servants crowded into the hot and stuffy garrets on the top floor. Here's another vibrant street scene of everyday life in Paris, also by Pissarro. Now let's talk about L for light. The Impressionists were fascinated by light and the colors it could capture. For example, look at these poplar trees, painted by Monet, along a river near his home. There's an S-bend in the river here, and you can see the trees follow the curve of the river's edge into the distance. We are looking at modern agribusiness here. These trees were spaced and planted in the regular pattern to be cut down for lumber. But Monet wasn't painting the trees. He was painting the light on the trees, and he did a whole series of these paintings. The museum actually has two of them. He wanted to capture the light at different times of day and in different seasons. The Impressionists were also fascinated by artificial light, as we can see in one of my absolute favorite Impressionist paintings. It's by Mary Cassatt. Here we see a very modern woman in a private box at the opera lit by the artificial light from the chandelier, which has just been lowered into the hall. Can you see that there's a mirror behind her that reflects her hair and mirror from behind? So the people in that balcony are not behind her, but in front of her, 
reflected in the mirror. And the chandelier we see in the mirror is in front of her also. But wait, look how Cassette is playing with light and reflections. If the chandelier is in front of her, the front of her face should be in the light and the back of her head in the shadows. But Cassatt has the shadow on the front of her face. So this painting is really an exploration of light and reflections. And now for our next letter, B for brush strokes. Instead of those finely crafted, highly detailed brush strokes, the Impressionists favored freer brush strokes that don't capture the detail that we saw in those licked academic paintings. Look at this picture by Monet. Again, it's a busy scene of modern life at a port. Now look at the people. When you actually see people at a distance, you don't see every detail of their faces and clothing. You just get, well, an impression. Notice how Monet paints the people with very free brush strokes that just suggest a person walking with a shadow, but there's no attempt to capture the minute details. Remember that I said that the academic painters worked in the studio, but at this time there was a radical invention that gave us two things, cleaner teeth and impressionism. That's right, those little tubes. Prior to this, artists had to make their colors by hand as they were painting in the studio. But in the late 1800s, chemists developed synthetic colors and found a way to put paint in little tubes. That brings us to O for outdoors. With the new synthetic paint in tubes, they could paint outdoors in direct contact with the things they wanted to paint, not necessarily making sketches and then taking them back to the studio. Look at this painting by Sisley, who captures this winter scene of modern working boats. Sisley emphasizes that he is painting outside with the mooring lines in the painting that suggest he is standing on one of the moored boats and he painted this in the bitterly cold winter of 1879, as we can see in this print from the Chicago Institute of Art that shows that winter in Paris. You can even see the horses dropping dead from the cold. An artist friend of mine told me that you can see that Sisley mixed his oil paints with thinners, so the paint would flow even in the cold weather, and he used that thinned paint to capture the pale look of winter clouds. That's what it means to paint outdoors. And speaking of clouds, let's finish with W for weather and atmosphere. The Impressionists love the softening effect of clouds, smoke, and mist, as we see in this painting by Pissarro that captures it all for us. It's called The Effect of Fog, and it's a perfect elbow painting. It's a scene of everyday modern life that experiments with light effects, uses freer brush strokes, seems to have been painted outside, and is totally fascinated with weather and atmosphere. So, elbow. Really, it's just a formula to get you started with enjoying Impressionist paintings. There are as many paintings that don't conform to it as do. But do come to the museum and see for yourself. And thank you for joining me on this visit to the Philadelphia Museum of Art. For a list of paintings and links to the museum website, look at the description of this YouTube. And if you liked what you saw, subscribe to my channel for other videos about the fabulous art in the Philadelphia Museum of Art.